So for today's adventure, we're going to head to Boggy Pond in the Wairapa. It is part of the Wairapa Dark Sky Reserve. It's a nature reserve. It's a beautiful place to capture the Milky Way. Very dark skies, very little light pollution whatsoever. Should be a good adventure. So welcome to Boggy Pond. Let's go for a walk around and see what we can discover. Hopefully there'll be a nice tree somewhere that we can photograph with the Milky Way. Should be a great night. Hopefully we'll get the Milky Way core rising over the middle here and a bit later in the night we'll get a nice arc going on. So here we are we're at the tree as you can see behind me it'll make a really nice subject for the Milky Way tonight. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use an app called Photopools what Photopools does is let me plan where the position of the Milky Way will be over an object at any given time of the year during the Milky Way season, which is extremely useful. What it will do is it'll let me use the AR or the augmented reality to actually see through my phone where the Milky Way will be during the night. I can see where the Milky Way core will be in relation to this tree. The best time of night for the position of the Milky Way over the middle of this tree and the angle that I'll have to approach it at. I may have to go around the other side of the tree, I suspect, over there and shoot that way. So what we're going to do now is we're going to open the app called Photopools by clicking on it. As you can see, Photopools has planner, sun, moon, exposure, depth of field, field of view, depth of field table and hyperfocal table. At the moment, we're just going to concern ourselves with the planner just right here. And I'm currently over here in the wire wrapper region where my pin is. So you'll see here at the top of the app, you can see the moon is coming up at 9.04 a.m. going down at 10.12 p.m. This gives me a window of opportunity to shoot the Milky Way from essentially 10 o'clock right until about 5 a.m. in the morning before the sun comes up. As you can see, it's currently 6.46 p.m. What I do here is I scroll through, and as you can see, the Milky Way is starting to come into position there, starting to pop up at about 11.30 p.m. It's going to go all the way through until roughly 4.30 a.m. before it starts getting light. So as you can see here, I'm going to have to come to the other side of the tree to get the Milky Way core rising over. You'll see the Milky Way core just here. See that? See where these dots are? Yep, excellent. There we go. Gets daylight around about 4.27. It starts light, lighting up. So using the night AR, you're able to point at a subject such as this tree. Scroll through the time here. And as you'll see, you'll see this orange dot in the middle. That's the core of the Milky Way starting to get busy around about 3, 4.20. It's in a perfect position. That tree looks pretty cool, around about 3 to 4 a.m. in the morning. That is next weekend on the 8th of uh, February, 2025. That'll be a late start and a 
late finish. That'll be worth the effort though. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just drive around a little bit further and see what else I can discover along the way. So here we go. Let's go. Let's go and have a look around and see what else we can discover here at Foggy Pond. So I found this really gorgeous shearing shed, which I'm just panning through here to show you. It's just off the main road. It also means that I don't have to go onto the property to actually take my image, which would be great. No angry farmers in the middle of the night. What I'm going to do now is scroll through photo pools and see what time of the year this will have a nice Milky Way over it. So what I've done now is I've changed the date here. Simply all you do is click on the date choose the date that you predict it to be. Let's try July the 27th. Click there. Click OK. We drop the pin over it. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. Look at that. No moon. Nine. It's quite high at nine. Oh, around about 11, 12, 2, so from 11 till 2, it's in perfect alignment over the shearing shed. That'll make a really nice arc. So what I've done now is I've found the Duck Hunter's Shack on photo pills, and I've dropped a pin on it. I'm just having a look here. As you can see, I can probably start taking this shot around about 11.22, all the way through to about 1.16, maybe 2 a.m. at a push. I don't want the Milky Way core to get too high in the image. So I'm probably going to be taking this shot around about anywhere from 12 to about 1.30 at the most. The first thing to do when setting up your Polaris is to make sure your tripod is nice and level. This is extremely crucial, especially for multi-row panoramas for astrophotography. So the next thing you do is you get your Polaris with the mounting hole on the bottom here, you simply put that onto here and you screw it in a couple of times. Here we go. You can see that there. Just rotates around, three, two, one, and we're nice and tight. Don't over tighten it though. So with the next step of setting up your Polaris is you get the Astro head, simply slide that into place. As you can see, it goes in there. You can hear the click. Bring it up till you hear it click and do up this screw on this side here. Yet again, not over tightening. There we go. The next thing you do is use this mounting plate here that comes with the kit to mount this to the bottom of your camera. Some people prefer to use an owl bracket or a rotation ring. As you can see here, I've put the mounting plate on the bottom of my camera. Pretty straightforward to do, just screw it in. So on the unit, there's a screw on this side and a clamp on this side. Undo the clamp by pulling it backwards. Get your camera. Yep, that looks like it's going to fit. Then I tighten the clamp and then I do up the screw on the other side. As you can see, I've got the camera cable connected here. The camera cable goes from here to the bottom of the Polaris and I've got the Astro cable connected. We're just about ready to go. What we'll do now is we'll turn it on. Here we go. So you get one beep and three short beeps. What you want to do now is level your Polaris by double tapping on the keyboard. There it goes. It's going to start auto leveling now. So a lot of astrophotographers with the Polaris 
they will use this device here. This device here is a small rig rotatable collar. What this enables me to do is switch from landscape to portrait mode simply by rotation. Most astrophotographers that use the Polaris prefer to shoot panoramas using the portrait mode. There you go, see, nice and easy to rotate. Rotate back up. Then you've got a locking switch on the front here. And you just lock that into place. The rotatable collar is best, so it means you can shoot portrait and you can get a bigger section of the sky at any one time. So my main focus of tonight is the tree, obviously. And then the second shot will be the duck hunter's shack. Unfortunately, with the shearing shed, that's not till later on in the year. I want to come back and get a nice arc over the shearing shed. So after I've taken my foreground shots, I'm going to leave the Polaris here, power it off, come back later, do my celestial alignment, and then take my shots of the sky. Go back and have a nice cup of tea and a biscuit and relax for a little while. Now what you'll do is you'll go to the Astro module by clicking here. As you can see, you've got photo, HDR, video, pano, Time lapse, path lapse, focus stack, and astro. We want astro. So let's click astro. There we go. What it's telling us now is we need to do an alignment. To calibrate your Polaris, what you simply do is grab your phone, put it next to the Polaris, press start calibration, and then it will calibrate. What I'm going to do now is choose can of course to align to, and off we go. And the Polaris is going to rotate around and it's going to go and try and find Canopus. It's normally pretty good. It does tend to be off a little bit. So what I'm going to do here is just slightly, oh, there we go, other way. Let's just go slightly the other way. Oops, a bit too much. Here we go. And over here, here we go. A little touch sensitive, this thing. Here we go, one more tap. Oh, the other way. Here we go, press confirm. Next, what we do is we click start tracking. Okay, so I'm set here and I'm ready to track. Now I'm tracking, what I'm going to do now is move the Polaris into where I want to take the shot. So here we go. Don't push this side here, only use the left side. So I'm going to rotate the Polaris around to where I want to go. Once I've got it into position, I'll take a test shot. Okay, so I'm into test position now. What you can do, if you can't see the back of your screen, which you often can't when you're using the Polaris, you can push the shutter release button right here and press shutter mode, and then press complete. There we go. So what that does is it's turned the live view on on the back of the camera. What I'm gonna do now, is I'm going to zoom in on a star and focus on the live view. First I'll connect the Polaris back up because I back to the shutter mode. One thing you have to do is make sure you've got RAW plus JPEG enabled in your camera otherwise you won't get a preview. I'm going to do a quick test shot so let's take the ISO down let's go to something like about well 3200 F2 Let's go for 20 seconds. And what we do here is we press go, and it's going to take a shot. As you can see, it's tracking. So we're just doing 20 seconds, make it nice and easy, just to check if everything looks good. Almost there. As you can see, it's saying image is being processed, and it should come up with a preview. There we go. 
look at that. So now we can actually see. Yep, we look pretty sharp actually. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get ready, get my composition, and I'm going to give it a crack. Now that we've got some successful shots done, test shots done in just your normal mode, we're going to go over to pro mode. And we're going to do our panorama. So we click over here. First thing to do is tell the Polaris I'm using full frame or APS-C. Put my lens size in, which is 35mm. Okay, and I'm in landscape mode currently and the overlap is 33. What we do now is we set the start point for the panorama. Over here. There you go. So you set your start point by adjusting your controls. So I'm going to start a little bit wider because I'm using a 35. Alright, that's my start point. And I'm going to go to my end point. This 35 mils quite tight. Okay, and then I'm going to come up a little bit as well. Click my end point. As you can see, the Polaris has said it's going to do six shots. So I'm ready, and then I'm going to push go. And off she goes. Six shots remaining. So welcome to the Wairapa Dark Sky Reserve. So you come from Wellington, you head through Upper Hutt, you head over the Rumataka Hill, you come into Featherston, and then you turn off at Featherston, and then you're in the Wairapa Dark Sky Reserve. Very little light pollution. You can't see at the moment, obviously, but the skies are very, very dark here. If I look up, I can just see the stars shining. And if I look over there, I can start to see the Milky Way slowly starting to rise. The tail's just coming up. Should be an absolutely gorgeous night for Milky Way photography. It is going to get very cold tonight. It's currently about four degrees centigrade. It will get to zero around about midnight tonight. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some warm clothes on and rug up. It's going to be quite chilly tonight. And then I'm going to head to the tree, get myself set into position and wait for that Milky Way to rise above that tree. It should be absolutely gorgeous. So now I'm here at the tree, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Viltrox 24mm and I'm going to do a panorama of the ground at one minute each, maybe five or six shots, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then I'm going to use the Nikon 50mm 1.8S and I'll be using that for the sky and do a nice pano of the sky, possibly starting from the top and then coming down in a zigzag pattern like this should be absolutely fantastic.